Hello everybody, it's Corbett Dan. Welcome back to the channel. Please click that notification bell and smash the thumbs up for today's video is C3 brake bleeding. Stay tuned. Alright everybody, um, before we go on and show you how we're going to bleed these brakes, there are a lot of debates out there on what you should do, what could happen. Um, we're talking even O-ring calipers versus lip seal calipers, pressure bleeding, gravity bleeding, you name it. Okay, we're not really going to discuss the debates on that because, again, I'm relatively new to C3 and I've heard everything under the sun and I have yet to develop my own solid opinion. However, what we are going to do is we're going to show how I'm going to gravity bleed these brakes. So you can say there's a better way and that's fine and I'm learning. But right now I'm just looking to gravity bleed these brakes and we're going to show you how to do that. Stay tuned. Okay everybody, uh, regarding gravity bleeding, there's different opinions on that too, right? Um, there are some people that say, oh, you should get the front end in the air when you're doing the rears. And I tried without it. So I got the uh, brakes to improve a little bit. However, we're going to try it now. Uh, we're going to get the front end in the air. I'm going to drive it up these homemade ramps I made here. Please always remember to stay safe. Um, you're going to use proper jack stands, obviously, your parking brake. Um, if you can, chalk in the wheels. Uh, please be safe. If you can't do the job safe, you simply cannot do the job. I cannot overstress the importance of safety. Also, a reminder, your cell phone is a safety device. God forbid you get pinned underneath the car and you have your phone near you. You can dial 911, so keep that in mind. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this thing up in the air. We're going to secure that. We're going to take the, uh, show you the next steps then. All right, folks, at this point, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get this uh, master cylinder cover off. Okay, you're going to just pry these two back, this one that way, that one that way. Um, also, you're going to need some rags. Uh, you need to make sure you have plenty of proper brake fluid, dot three, clean brake fluid, not anything that's been sitting open on your shelf for six months. You want brand new unopened brake fluid at all times. Also, make sure you put something on your fender to protect it from, most importantly at this point, brake fluid. Okay, brake fluid will eat through your paint. Be very careful. If you get brake fluid on your paint, wipe it up and clean it up very promptly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start that. Also, careful to note, when you are bleeding your brakes, make sure that the fluid does not drop below the level where it could be sucking in air. That's the last thing you want to do because you're trying to get air out of the system, not back in it. Stay tuned. All right, folks, I want to just remind you, if you're not confident that you can't jack your car up and secure it, secure it so it is safe um, to do this, then you must stop and not perform this operation. This isn't for you. Um, but... Assuming that you can do that, we're going to proceed and, and start to show. What you're going to do is you're going to find two bleeders here, and you're going to have to do both of them. Now, I want to also point out that you want to start at the wheel furthest from the master cylinder, which is, of course, the passenger rear. Okay, so um, to get the wheel off, I used a three-quarters impact socket, right? I have a jack. I have it secured with the parking brake. I have a jack stand. I have the wheel chocked. Don't talk to me about safety. The car's as safe as it can be. Um, also, I'm not underneath it, so let's just, if you can't do this safely, you can't do the job, so let's get past that here. Okay, so we're going to bleed this. Now, it's just gravity at this point, folks. You're going to get, um, you're going to get a vacuum hose or something. You're going to put it over the end of the bleeder. You're going to loosen it up, and it's simply just going to, by the uh, basis of gravity alone, it's going to drain. You're going to make sure the master stays filled at all times with clean, fresh DOT3 brake fluid. And we're just going to show how that works. Okay, this is what it looks like. And basically, we used a 5 16 bleeder wrench. But what we did is we first broke it with this wrench. And then we used an open end to loosen it as the hose was on it. We wanted to make sure the hose was there and didn't make a mess. And as you could maybe see, it's just kind of a medium speed drip. Um, that's probably the best you're going to get, but what you want to do is you want to let this go for a while. I honestly don't know how, how long. Um, we're just going to wing it, but make sure that master stays filled at all times. So basically, it's at this point, wait. We're going to do this a while, and then we'll switch and we'll do the other bleeder. Then we'll move on to the next wheel, so stay tuned. All right, folks, as you can see now, I've switched to the other bleeder, right? And what we have is it's dripping again. Um, I stopped when I saw that the drip 
coming out of one side uh, slow down significantly. Um, when your bleeding breaks, obviously you're looking for signs of air. Um, in this case, even the first time I did it, I did not see any signs of air. It's just that I did not uh, lift up the front of the car when I did the rears. Again, the first time I did this, I thought it improved. But, you know, I did it uh, a couple wheels and I moved the car, drove it around. Um, I'm going to do all four wheels without moving the car at all because if there was air somewhere else I could have you know moved it around the system So another thing I would like to note is that when you are doing this make sure you do all four wheels um, before you attempt to drive the car so that you know that You got air out of each wheel or hopefully you got all the air out because if you just do like two wheels And there was air in the front it can move around in the system and obviously not really uh, do anything But maybe improve the feel but certainly not get it to where you need it I'm a further note, I am doing this prior to my um, master cylinder install because I was looking at the master in this car and it looks quite old and I was told by a number of individuals that um, these masters can leak internally and that since it does look old you might as well go ahead and replace it. Um, however, I'm going to source a correct date coded master but for right now I am doing this. Not only that, I'm getting you know fresh fluid in the system. So we're going to do process of elimination here first. That's why we're bleeding the brakes. Uh, not a bad idea to do this anyway on C3s. And if you don't know why, believe me, there's plenty of information about that on the internet as I'm learning myself too. Anyway, we're going to let this in, uh, drip for a while. And then when I see it slow down, I'm going to switch over to the other side. All right, folks. Now after the um, both bleeders reduced to a slower drip, I tightened them up. Put the wheel back on and I switched over. We're on the um, driver rear now and right now we got a really fast drip here and again it's just wait and make sure at all times that you have plenty of fresh dot three brake fluid in your master check periodically. So we are waiting at this point and we'll move on to the fronts in a few here. Again you're going to want to check the master make sure there's plenty of fresh dot three brake fluid. In your master at all times while you're doing this and don't touch the brake pedal while you're doing this all right this is a gravity bleed this is a one-person job okay keep it covered otherwise you don't want something flying in there while you're doing this as well as you can see from this master it's pretty old now I'm gonna ask something see how keen you folks are by a quick look you see anything wrong with that power brake booster? Besides being old, we're gonna change that too eventually here. Um, stay tuned at the end, I will tell you. All right, folks, make sure you do both bleeders and make sure they're uh, properly tightened uh, when you are done. Um, I've read somewhere that uh, you should start with one side over the other. Um, I don't know that it makes a difference because I've done a lot of uh, research and talked to a lot of people on uh, bleeding these brakes and everybody seemed to have an opinion. So please drop your comment and let me know what you think. I really want to hear what you have to say on this. Again, um, C3 is new to me, so I'm learning along with you in many cases. So we're going to let this one drip out for a while and then we'll move to the front. One thing I did notice is that regardless of which bleeder I, I start with, um, one side always seems to come out faster than the other. So that's one thing I think you will also note it. Note, but um, what I do is I let it, you know, drip, and then once it really slows down significantly, we cap it back up. Always remembering to keep enough dot three fresh dot three brake fluid in the master at all times. So stay tuned. All right, folks, we've moved to the front, and for the life of me, I thought these calipers had two bleeder screws. Uh, this one in the front only has one. So maybe the rears have two and the front have one. I don't know, but um, after this, we're going to uh, go over to the driver's side and we'll investigate that. Now, keep in mind that um, you're always going to start at the wheel farthest from the master. So that's why we're ending with the uh, driver front because that's the wheel closest to the master. So again, we're going to let this... Um, it's a very fast drip right now. I'm going to wait till this slows down significantly. Make sure there isn't two bleeder screws and then move on to the uh, driver's side here. I'm noting that uh, it was obvious that the rear calipers, and I knew that were brand new. This one does not appear to be new. Uh, maybe a couple of front calipers are in the near future for this car. We'll just have to wait and see. At this point, it does break fine. It just, you know, has that pedal that um, many of us have come to 
unfortunately accept, but I'm doing everything in my power to get me a much higher and much firmer pedal. Um, at this point, I believe it has something to do with the hydraulics and not the brake booster because the brake booster would definitely do something else. Um, anyway, we're going to let this go to a slow drip, making sure there's plenty of fluid in the master, and then move on to the driver side. All right, folks, and last but not least, we have driver front and what seems to be odd to me is that this caliper appears to be new just like the both rears but the front on the other side the driver's side did not um, I've had this car for two and a half months and I've been over this car quite a bit and that's about the only odd thing I've seen on this car yet um, I do not know why and I assure you this thing does not pull um, why that caliper wasn't changed with this one. I highly doubt if it was based on the looks of this and the other two. But um, that's a topic for another day at this point. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's dripping pretty fast. Uh, let's remind ourselves the tools of the trade. You're going to need a 5 16 line wrench to break the bleeder screws. You're going to need a container to put the old brake fluid in. Uh, remember to properly dispose of that check with your uh, local um, municipality check with your little auto parts store or local shop they can help you out also you're going to need a um, let's just call it a um, rubber hose of some sort to fit over the bleeder screw I do not know what size this is I apologize that's easily looked up on the internet also keep in mind you're going to need plenty of fresh unopened dot three brake fluid and a flat head screwdriver to pry open the uh, top of the master uh, we're going to need a jack stand you're going to need a jack. You're going to need uh, potentially chocks for the wheels to make sure this car stays stable. Make sure it's in park um, or parking brake and or parking brake, I should say. And remember, stay tuned to the end here because I'm going to tell you what is wrong with the power brake booster on this car. So we're just going to let this come to a slow drip. We'll wrap it up and then we will reveal what's wrong with that power brake booster. Hopefully you might have some ideas. Stay tuned. All right, folks, we've gotten this all buttoned up now. Um, that is how you gravity bleed a C3. Um, I know you're waiting for that pressing question, what's wrong with my power brake boost, but I want to remind you first off, um, please use fresh dot three brake fluid. Keep that uh, master topped off at all times while you're doing this. Torque your lug, uh, lug, lug nuts to 100 foot pounds. Make sure the car is properly, properly secured with jack stands, wheel chocks, Safety is number one, okay? So from here, to answer that question, please click that thumbs uh, up and notification bell. It does help the channel, I've learned. Please help me out with that thumbs up, notification bell. Greatly appreciated. But to answer your question, what's wrong with this power brake booster? Well, folks, it's upside down. The check valve is supposed to be up here. It's down here. Uh, apparently that doesn't make a difference in terms of the performance, but we're going to rectify that because we're going to get a new booster. We're going to get a new master. But thanks again, everyone. Stay tuned for more C3 videos. This is Corvette Dan. Until the next one, thank you very much.